We talked about constant volume calorimetry. We also have constant pressure calorimetry, and this is what we did in lab. Um, the heat of reaction for many aqueous reactions can be measured in a coffee cup calorimeter. We've got two nested foam cups. We used two because it insulates better than one. Um, it's going to be open to the atmosphere. It's not sealed pressure-wise, so the constant pressure, uh, the pressure is constant, is what I meant to say. So the heat um, absorbed or released by the solution equals the mass of the solution times the specific heat capacity of the solution times the change in temperature. The heat of the reaction occurring within that solution is going to be equal but opposite to the, the heat change for the solution. We can measure this because we can measure the temperature change. We can determine Cs and we can measure the mass. So we can measure this. We can't directly measure Q reaction. At constant pressure, delta H for the reaction, the change in enthalpy for the reaction is equal to Q at constant pressure, which here equals Q for the reaction. So we can get the heat of reaction per mole by just calculating um, this Q and dividing by the number of moles. This question is so long. The addition of hydrochloric acid to a silver nitrate solution precipitates silver chloride according to the reaction. Okay, so here's our reaction. Um, when 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar silver nitrate is combined with 50 milliliters of 0 0.10 molar hydrochloric acid in a coffee cup calorimeter, the temperature changes from 23.40 degrees Celsius to 24.21 degrees Celsius. Calculate the heat of reaction for this reaction as written. Use one gram per milliliter as the density of the solution and C equals 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius as the specific heat capacity. So if you were doing um, a reaction like this in practice without um, the benefit of other people's experiments, um, you would have to determine the specific heat capacity of the solution in a separate experiment. But they're saving us from that. You'd also have to measure the density. And so we're going to use these. So I'm going to erase the very top of this because there's no room to do anything here. We really don't need this line or these first two sentences or any of this business at the top to do the problem. Okay, so now we at least have a place to write down what all this stuff means. Um, so we've got, for this one, we've got 50 milliliters of 0.10 molar silver nitrate. Well, let's write that down. I didn't, I don't have space underneath, but I can write it above. 50.0 milliliters in its 0.100 molar. Um, actually, let's do this. Moles per liter because we sometimes forget that capital M means moles per liter. And we also have 50 milliliters of this, and that is also 0 0.100 moles per liter. And then we're given um, temperature changes. So we're given an initial and a final temperature um, I think we have enough experience now to recognize we're going to need delta T, the change in temperature. The change in temperature is going to be the final, 24.21, minus the initial, 23.40. 24.21 minus 23.40. 0 0.81 degrees Celsius. That's our delta T. And then we're given 
C, we're told to use 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And we're trying to find the heat of reaction. Heat of reaction for the reaction as written. Well, <coughs> for this constant pressure calorimetry, what does the heat of reaction equal? It equals Q for the reaction, right? Well, what does Q for the reaction equal? Because we can't measure that. It's the opposite sign of Q for the solution. S-O-L-N is how we abbreviate solution. Can we calculate Q for the solution? Q equals MC delta T, right? And here we have delta T, and here we have C, and could we figure out what the mass of the solution is? We could. We've got, we've got the volumes of things that were mixed, and we have the density. So we need the mass of the solution. Actually, maybe I should finish this out up here. What this will be equal to, we've got that negative sign. The mass of the solution, the specific heat capacity of the solution, and delta T for the solution. So we've got the last two. We still need to figure out what M is. Well, what's the total volume of the solution? 100 milliliters, right? So we took 50 milliliters of that and 50 milliliters of this and put them together. So a total of 100 milliliters. We need mass, though. Here's our density. So if I multiply by grams over milliliters, then the milliliters cancel out, and I can convert my volume into a mass. And it's 1.00 grams per milliliter. So that's going to come out to be 100. That's the mass of the solution. Well, now we have everything we need to calculate the heat of reaction. We've got the mass. Oh, don't forget the minus sign. We've got the mass, 100 grams. We have the specific heat capacity, 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. We have our temperature change, 0.82 degrees Celsius. One hundred times four point one eight times point eight two. So minus three forty two point seven five. And what's the unit on that? The grams cancel out, and the degrees Celsius cancel out, and the only unit left is joules. Yes? Yes, it is. Thank you. I don't know why our... The, yeah, it, it, that messes it up. Thank you. I hate it when I do stuff like that. Ooh, and I hate it when I do stuff like that, too. When you erase something that you colored white on, then things underneath show through. 0.81. Okay. Um... 100 times 4.18 4 times 0.81. Yeah. So 338.58 joules. How many significant figures should that number have? Why three? 
How many does this one have? Four. And this one has three. And this one has two. So this has two. Is this the answer to the question? Not quite. Calculate heat of reaction. We did that, but we're missing this part. For the reaction as written. The reaction as written means that this is for one mole of silver nitrate and for one mole of hydrochloric acid. Did we use one mole of silver nitrate? No. Can we figure out how many moles we did actually use? Yeah, we can. We have the molarity and the volume. Now, you could do this for the silver nitrate or for the HCl. It doesn't matter. You just need to choose one of them because these are stoichiometric amounts, right? One mole of this plus one mole of that, and we can tell from the same volumes and the same concentrations that we have equal numbers of moles of these. So we don't have to worry about limiting reactants or anything. So down here at the bottom, I'm going to take the 50 milliliters, and I need to change that into um, liters. And then I'm going to multiply by 0 0.100 moles per liter. Get all my units to work out there. So point. Uh, 0 0.05 times 0 0.1. I come up with 0 0.005 moles. How many significant figures should that number have? Three, right? This number has three. That's an exact conversion. This has three. As I've written it, this only has one. So I need to be smarter than my calculator and stick two more zeros on there. This is moles of silver nitrate. So this is the amount of energy released when 0 0.005 moles of silver nitrate is reacted. How can I find out the number of joules for one mole? I want joules per one mole, right? So if I take this and divide by the number of moles that I actually had, then I can get joules per mole. Um, I'm going to have to create more space. 